Do you like being alive? Reaping all the benefits of life, like eating food, laughing at funny jokes, being able to watch your choice of infinite media? Well, if that's the case, you probably don't want to run into any of these five ridiculous creatures that we'll be discussing today. Cosmic horror can be a lot of different things, usually stemming from the style of the ever-present HP Lovecraft. Many creators have taken the idea of cosmic horror and ran with it, mutating it in whatever sick, twisted way they see fit, and in doing so, they've come up with some of their own fiendish monsters. Monsters that, if you enjoy being alive more than the idea that death could be so much worse, you'd rather just disappear. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be counting down the top five cosmic horror monsters too dangerous to be left alive. I'll be avoiding monsters made specifically by HP himself for the sake of variety, so you can check out some of our other Lovecraftian videos if that's more of your style. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more unholy abominations. Perfect. Let's begin. Coming in at number five, we've got Sutter Kane. Okay, well, technically, Sutter Kane himself isn't an eldritch abomination. He's a writer, but he's got the power to create and bring forth eldritch abominations. Isn't that so much worse than any one monster? Whereas cosmic horrors usually don't have any regard for human life and can't be understood in explicit terms, a human with the ability to summon these horrors is an awful prospect. Kane commands great control over the minds of people through his writing, and in doing so, weaves a powerful web of brainwashed followers prior to triggering the apocalypse. Masterminding his plan from the once fictional town of Hobbs End, Kane makes it clear that the public's belief in his books has awakened an ancient race of Lovecraftian horrors, and that the delivery of his latest manuscript will seal the world's fate. In amongst the many other other twists of Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness, there is one that reigns supreme. The entire world is made by Cain. Everyone you've ever known is just a character created by some uncaring god, fitting pieces together to create stories. It's kind of like how Azathoth created everything in his eternal sleep, and by confronting him about it, you could end the world. It's a concept that's been visited time and time again, the idea that we're all made up by something greater than us, but it's extra disturbing in Carpenter's love letter to Lovecraft because this formless, shapeless being actually turns out to be a man like anyone else. Something has given him power to create universes and to interact with the characters inside them. If he's human though, shouldn't somebody be able to stop him? Kill him? Well, that's also up in the air. If someone were to try, would anything really happen? Or would greater horrors and less familiar forms appear? Coming in at number four, we've got Winter Lanterns. If you're looking for a video game that embodies cosmic horror 100% and isn't just a cult mystery puzzle game, hop right into Bloodborne. Set in the fictional gothic London-esque city of Yarnum, Bloodborne is full of insane, horrifying monsters. Tentacles, tendrils, werewolves, brainwashed town folks, fleshy giants, accursed witches, you name it. All these monsters aren't just scary in concept though, they pack one hell of a punch throughout the game. One wrong move against any of these beasts and they'll kill your ass dead. Some will punch you in the face, others are a little more creative with how they do it. One particularly harrowing monster is the Winter Lantern. Compared to a lot of other monsters in the game, these creatures are especially cosmic. They look like giant rotting brains with gigantic eyes sprouting from their lobes. A mass of limbs pours from the bottom of their gigantic heads, allowing them to scuttle across the ground like a mass of insects supporting a tumor. Now, their appearance is enough to drive a lot of people to madness, but they have a trick up their sleeves for those who do not find themselves immediately incapacitated. Anyone in their line of sight will consistently be harmed by forces unseen and cause them to go gradually mad over time. In Bloodborne, this takes the form of the player's frenzy meter constantly rising. If you were to encounter one of these in real life, this would likely appear as someone's sanity slowly being sapped away. It's likely that winter lanterns are incomprehensible to humans, and that only people with great resistance to cosmic horror can even be near one without losing it entirely. Horrifying. Coming in at number three, we've got the Black Skulls. Usually I would say that demonic biker gangs with cosmic drugs are wicked cool. However, for the sake of this list, I'll say that they're definitely too dangerous to be allowed to continue living. Hailing from the insane, psychedelic world of Panos Cosmatos' Mandy, these are some interdimensional people eaters that you really don't want to face off against. Not unless you've chugged the handle of vodka while scream crying and done some of their galactic cocaine yourself. See, the Black Skulls aren't your average biker gang. They have strange, unexplainable powers. And in order to summon them, you need to provide a sacrifice, and blow on a special horn, and maybe provide them with some super strong LSD. It's a whole thing. Even then, they're really not loyal to you, they're just here to get a job done. The Black Skulls walk the line between human and monster, and that's part of why they're so scary. You can see their human form, their human desires, but there's something missing. And they become involved with the children of the New Dawn, who seek power from another cosmic source. It's very wild. Coming in at number two, The Crawler. If I have one complaint about the movie adaptation of Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation, it's that they left out the underground tower with the weird creature dwelling within. 
To me, that's the creepiest and most intriguing part of the novel. Sure, there's a whole world of crossbred monstrosities and lighthouse dwelling mysteries, but the blobby scripture writing thing in the tower that is most definitely not a staircase endures. For reasons that I don't think I can explain, the crawler writes repetitive quasi-religious text on the walls of the structure in plant material. Get too close and you might inhale some spores, as the biologist did. What could be more unnerving than accidentally breathing unknown biomaterial while investigating an alien location? Especially when it seems to have unpredictable effects on your body and mind. Not much, that's what. As the book continues, it's never clear as to whether the biologist has actually been changed or if she assumes she's changing and responds by acting differently. The secrecy of the initial mission doesn't help delineate between these two options either. As more terrors in Area X are revealed, the biologist becomes more curious and less like herself, or whatever she thinks she is. That's what's so scary about the crawler. It would be impossible to know if it was really having any effect on you. By the time the biologist comes face to face with it, she's learned so much more about what's going on in the strange location and probably actually understands even less. I don't want to spoil anything though, because the Southern Reach trilogy is a phenomenal example of cosmic horror literature, so go check it out. And finally, at number one, we've got Mahogany. How can you have a conversation about non-Lovecraft cosmic horror and leave out Clive Barker? I mean, I've done it in the past, but it was ill-advised. So today, the cosmic terror by Clive Barker that we'll be discussing is none other than the subway butcher himself. Mahogany. Now, Mahogany comes with a few footnotes. Like Sutter Kane, he himself is not exactly a cosmic horror, but what he represents and who he serves definitely is. See, in Barker's short story turned movie The Midnight Meat Train, we follow the exploits of a man named Leon. No relation to Leon Kennedy, unfortunately. Leon accidentally stumbles into some forbidden knowledge and it changes him forever. See, he thought the subway underneath New York City was scary because of how often it ran late or was full of people eating the stinky lunches. But the actual reason it was scary is that it often served as a lunch cart for a race of hideous abominations that had been there since time immemorial. He discovers this after encountering a terrifying people butcher named Mahogany who slices, dices, and hangs folks from meat hooks in the underground tunnel system. If the knowledge that all this was going on wasn't bad enough, it gets worse. After getting into a fight with Mahogany, Leon actually manages to kill him and then rides the train to its terminal stop. It's here that he meets the conductor who cuts out his tongue so he won't be able to relay this information to anybody. And now, Leon's the butcher. Yep, he's gotta kill innocent people and feed them to the ancient lizard things. And if he doesn't, they'll just start feeding themselves during the day. So it falls to poor Leon to become a mystical, murderous maniac in order to protect the world from the ever-present threat. You definitely want a creature like Mahogany dead, but if you kill him, you become him. And either way, the knowledge of the secret underground race is now your cross to bear. There's no winning here and no way out. So, do you agree with my assessment of these cosmic horrors? Are there any others that should take top prize? The prize being universally reviled? Well, make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more holy ones from the top five scary SCP monsters too dangerous to be left alive. Konrad Shunjan says, hey, you know that peanut head SCP? Some people say it's reproducing. What, like the baby peanut that planters tried to make a viral icon? I'd much rather have that eliminated than any SCP. Burker Sale again says, real number one is Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Too dangerous to be left alive, huh? Mr. Collins says, end of death is basically Deadpool, with less combat acumen and a lower chance of toilet humor. Otherwise, pretty much. Tyget2013 says, they should do an SCP card game like Yu-Gi-Oh or something. I think a bunch of those are actually in the works, unofficially. Check out the SCP Reddit, I always see people posting mock-ups in there. And Plague Doctor SCP-049 says, My cure is most effective and can cure everything. Just, it is in a progress. Yeah, your cure involves lobotomizing some corpses and leaving them catatonic, so I think I'll pass. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I walk the plank over shark-infested waters, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more interesting ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.